I'm Daniel. I'm Jay-Z. And this is Just My DIY. 3D sublimation is so hot right now. That's why we decided we had to give it a try. However, we discovered along the way that there are many things that could go wrong that could make or break your 3D experience. So in today's video, we're going to show you how we pick the right designs as well as how we sublimate 3D designs on a mug and a tumbler. So we have many tidbits for you along the way. Pay attention and we're going to get started. We're going to start with sublimating a 3D design on a mug. And the first things first, before things are hot, we're going to take our mug, put it inside our press and set its pressure. Once we get the pressure set, we're going to measure and see what the gap around the handle is, like where the heating element is hitting it. Then we're going to go pick an image. Now, we don't like harsh lines on either side of the handle when it comes to mugs. So we're looking not for the last kind of design, but for more of a design that has like some white on the edges so it can be natural. This is the bundle that we actually picked from Design Bundles. We'll link everything down below. And we dropped that into Photoshop. Now, first things first, we need to size it appropriately. We're gonna get the length of it set first, knowing that we're probably gonna have to trim off some of the design on the top and the bottom. Of course, we turn it 90 degrees so we can print. And then for our print settings, we're going with Photo Paper Matte and Best Quality. And we're printing this out on our converted Epson EcoTank, 15,000. It's an EcoTank that has sublimation ink put in it. Now once it's done printing out, we're gonna cut it down to size. We're gonna lose a little bit of the top of the bottom because that's the height of our stainless mug. And we're gonna trim a little bit off the edges to make sure that it can actually lay flat between the handle like we would like it to. We need to use some alcohol to go ahead and get all the human off of it. <laughs> Definitely don't want to have any oils on that. And you can see with this mug that there's that line at the bottom and we are aiming above that line so we can avoid ghosting. So you can see that Daniel has put the design right on top of that and we're going to show you how we tape it up. So we're setting it up so that uh, we can first get it around the, the mug correctly with good enough tension that it's flat against all surfaces and equally spaced across against the handle. Then, this is one of the tricks that we find most useful to avoid ghosting other issues. Now to just put a whole round piece of tape, not with a great amount of tension, but strong enough that you can avoid any gaps and massage it into place across that seam. And note that we are using heat resistant tape. This is very important. Again, everything that we use will be linked down below. So once we get that bottom nice and firm and really tucked into that seam, we have the top. Now your first layer of tape across the top doesn't need a lot of tension on it. We're just trying to make sure that we have something to work with to kind of create like our, our wrap like effect. And so I pin it down on one part, I pull it over and massage it over the top, being careful to avoid any wrinkles or crinkles in the paper. The tape will, and you can work that out as long as your paper is flat against your mug, you're going to do great. This is a method that we've used to get no ghosting on the tops of our sublimation blanks, and it works so well. As long as that paper is flat, you should be golden. You'll use a second layer of tape. And this one's going to have a lot of tension on it, like you're really trying to stretch it out to reaffirm the first job that you did. Of course, creating a tab so it's easy to disassemble the tape job and a good massage to stick it all into place. So that's all the taping that we do on this, around the top twice, around the bottom once, and then of course on either side of the handle, those tabs you will see come in handy when we are disassembling this. Now. We are going to use some blowout paper. We're just using copy paper. Any uncoated paper works. We have used butcher paper as well, but copy paper works great for this size mug. So we are going to tape that on and then we're going to slide this in the press. Now we are sublimating this at 375 degrees for 75 seconds. We're being very mindful, making sure that we have the mug centered in the press. So we're getting equal heat on either side of that handle. We have a silicone mat that we're gonna to use uh, to let this cool on top of, and then of course a heat resistant glove that makes it where we can actually grab this very hot sublimation blank once it comes out of the press. So once we pull it out, we like a hot peel, so that's where these tabs come in 
very handy. We are just gonna grab those tabs and look at how great that paper came off as well as how beautiful this design is. Now we're gonna give you some close-up beauty shots here. Wow, pretty. <laughs> And now we're going to move on to the 3D Tumblr sublimation. So, of course, reminder, set your pressure, but we're going to talk about designs because there's so many 3D Tumblr designs, especially on design bundles. We're looking for the ones that we can see the seam on. So we love when they have this flat layout of the image so you can see what that matching part of the design is going to be. For instance, these are beautiful designs, but they don't have it. But you can kind of guess on this that like if it's light on one side, dark on another, you're going to have a really harsh seam. We don't like harsh seams. That's personal preference. So if you're trying to avoid that, we're going to show you how we check to see that even designs like this that look like they're light on either side, we're going to show you how to check whether or not you're going to have a visible seam with these designs. So we are in Photoshop, but you can just do this like in preview, putting the images right next to each other, where you just put it, put the right side to the left side, and then you will see what your seam is going to look like. We can already tell this is going to be a pretty harsh seam because it's light on the left, dark or light on the right, dark on the left. And even if we put that over right where it would match, like the top's not gonna have too bad of a seam, but that bottom, because there's darkness in the dark in the uh, bottom left corner, it's just gonna have a visible seam. So this image is not one that we would use um, as is. This other one, however, this is not a pure white background, but we're able to see that we're not gonna have a seam no matter where that piece of paper lands. And so this is the one we're gonna use. We are going to go into, and we're gonna oversize it slightly because this is how we get a perfect seam. When we don't have to worry about matching a pattern, we oversize our image slightly so we can trim it to the exact specifications. So to get a print out, we're going to tilt it 90 degrees. There it is. There it is. <laughs> And then we're going to resize it and center it so that it will print out nicely. So that's because when we made the image a little bit bigger, we knew we were gonna have a margin issue. Like we say, it's gonna have a little bit of clipping, but we reduced that as much as we could before we printed. Now we're going to again cut everything to an inch of a slide. You can see me just measuring it as per the tumbler and using one of these fancy marked rulers in order to get squares and straight edges. One thing we will point out, if you're not super familiar with sublimation, is that sublimation printouts do look a little lighter when they come out. Don't worry, your colors will pop when they are heated. So in order to get this correct edge, you saw what I was doing there as I was lining it up, massaging the line so we could see exactly where it, it is. And again, measuring it as per the tumbler, not as per like a caliper or anything fancy like that. <laughs> Now we're going to use a bunch of pieces of tape to, and this is all heat resistant of course, to pull the two edges close together, tack on one side, tension towards the other, really get that seam to touch each other and whatever, you know, massage it into place mm -hmm. so we create a flat, smooth experience. So we're having it basically kiss. It touches, but it does not overlap. And now we do have a full video on how to sublimate a tumbler without uh, seams or ghosting. And so we will link that down below. This is the quick overview, but if you want it a little slower, we'll point you to that resource. But doing the top and bottom of this one is a bit like doing the top of that mug we previously showed you. We're going to, you know, put your first layer of tape, wrap it over the top, and then use a second layer of tape to tension against it, creating tabs so you have the easy disassembly system. And what you do on the top on this one, you'll try to replicate on the bottom. Of course, you have to deal with a curved edge, so you're going to have to be mindful of that and what it's going to do to the tape, but you do not want to do that to your paper. That's right. You know, with the sublimation mug, we had that nice line we could follow. We didn't really worry about curves, but on tumblers, you really need to hit it above that curve because if you try to fold paper around a curve, that's where you start getting the ghosting and the weird folds and that sort of thing. So it's like, where well, with the mug, we only needed one piece of tape around the bottom. We're actually doing the two strip of tape method on the top and bottom of a tumbler. 
massage everything into place of course make sure you have everything the way you want to see it work anything out with the fingernails and send it to the press <laughs> which would be me uh so we are going to use again just a sheet of copy paper perfect size for a 20 ounce tumbler put a little bit of heat resistant tape on there and now same time and temperature but what's different about a tumbler is that we're going to turn it this tumbler press and no tumbler press that we've worked with gets that full 360 so you end up having a gap up top so you want to turn it 180 degrees press it for 75 more seconds and then pull it out to make sure you get your full 360 wrap. Now, as you can see, we are using those uh, tabs again and how great they make um, getting this paper off. The paper does tear a little bit here. That's not a problem at all, but you can see what a perfect sublimation we got on this. We're gonna check that seam. We don't see a seam at all. Even though this design isn't white, and look at these close-up shots. Oh, Yay. that's amazing. Pretty. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> oh, the logs like it too. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot about 3D sublimation. And if you did, then you should go ahead and give us a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell. If you would leave us a nice comment in the comment line about your 3D experiences, that would be amazing. <laughs> and of course, anything that we use to do this is listed out in the description. Also in the description are links to all of our social handles. Please connect with us across platforms. We love hearing from you. And don't forget to check out our blog at JustMyDIY.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.